So my action plan actually has to do with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and its effects on communities in the United States. So just a brief history, as, you, as I'm sure all of you know, this is a very intense conflict. Um, and it does affect everyone, not only in the region, but also in the US. Um, so just some major issues within the conflict, land, security, Jerusalem, refugee status, and borders. So um, there's a lot of different things that go into this conflict. It's not just one large thing, um, just to show you a little bit of the complexity. So I'm focusing on the indirect effects. Um, so I'm not gonna focus on what it does to the people in the Middle East region, in Israel itself, um, but actually one in five Americans rate this conflict as one of the top three issues overall for US national interests. So that just shows you how much people actually care about this conflict, whether they're in the US or in other countries. Um, but yeah. So here's just a quote. I'm gonna focus on college campuses in particular. Um, so this says, the campus atmosphere is definitely toxic for internal growth as it does not promote peaceful discourse. I was never given the opportunity to ask the proper naive questions for fear of running red and embarrassing myself. So that's just from um, an alumna from Brandeis. Um, and this just shows this is not just happening at Brandeis, this is happening everywhere, this is happening here. So this is a picture from Syracuse University, actually right next door in Eggers Hall. Um, this is a student being escorted out during a um, Danny Diane, he's the in Israel's Consul General in New York, and he came to speak, um, and he is controversial. He advocates on behalf of Israeli settlements, which is one of the problems that I did mention earlier. Um, so this is something that there was a protest, something that um, um, totally disrupted the, the speech itself. Um, so that just goes to show you that this is happening here on campus. And here's some quotes, um, this one, is also in response to the same Danny Diane um, talk. So that says, free, free Gaza, free, free Palestine, stealing land is a crime, Danny should be doing time, and Danny Diane, you have blood on your hands. So I focus on a study um, from the Foundation for Ethnic Understanding, and it actually is one of the first studies that um, looked at Muslim-Jewish relations in the United States. Um, and it found that the largest divide between Muslims and Jews is the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And it quantified that cooperation and dialogue leads to stronger relationships. So it found that more exposure to each other, uh, the more likely they were to see each other's religion as more inclusive. And it also concluded that dialogue allows people to acknowledge other narratives and understand each other on a bit of a more personal level. So my plan was I brought together many different organizations on campus to plan a dialogue event. Um, so I brought together Lime, the Department of Jewish Studies also was a co-sponsor. Hendricks Chapel is one of my main partners, and um, the Muslim Student Association at Syracuse University. So there were many people involved in this. Um, it was basically going to be a dialogue event that started off with um, the dean of Hendricks Chapel, um, Dean Conkle. He was going to introduce everything, talk about um, conflict resolution, and then it was going to go into a brief overview by um, a professor here on campus. Um, Professor Elman, and she teaches an Israeli-Palestinian conflict class, so she is an expert on this topic. And then we were going to split, split the group, split the room into groups, and have each each student, um, each group assigned a specific topic, such as borders, Jerusalem, refugee status, and they were just going to talk about it. And they were going to talk about how it made them feel and different perspectives on it. Um, so that was the plan. And this is the flyer. Um, it was Monday, December 3rd, so th that last Monday. So the event was actually canceled. Um, so I found out three days prior, I got a call from the Dean of Hendricks, and he received um, numerous calls from concerned students who felt that he was endorsing a pro-Israeli event. He thought these students felt that it was a biased event. Um, which was disappointing because I feel that it was objective, um, as objective as an, event, as, as an event on this conflict could be. I mean, of course, people are nervous to talk about it. It is a high emotion um, type of thing. So that obviously was expected, but that's nothing to turn away. Um, we shouldn't stop dialogue because it's something that might feel uncomfortable. Um, so basically, 
I was left with what can I do? Um, if we can't come together to talk about something, then not even just with this conflict in general, but with any conflict, I don't see how we can progress at all. Um, so that was a little bit of a um, discouraging element, um, but my next step is I want to figure out what it was from these concerned students that was bothering them. If, if it was just the whole nature of the conflict, um, whether it was a particular speaker. So I, and based on confidentiality, I can't get this information from Dean Conkle himself. So my next step is to try, he said he was gonna reach out to these students and see if they were willing to talk to me. So I'm still waiting on that. Um, but as we've heard throughout some presentations, CCE does love handoffs. So there is still time for this to be done. Um, the only thing that I have to figure out or tell the next student to figure out is what it is about this conflict or dialogue in general that caused it to be canceled and caused these important speakers to pull out. Um, so it's disappointing, but it's also, I think that I'm optimistic for the future. I think that this event can still happen. Um, and it honestly, it showed me more that this is a big, big problem on campus. Um, so it's really, it spoke volume and um, maybe said more than the event probably would have. So I'm hoping that this can be done in the future, whether by myself or another CCE student. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna open it up to any questions. When the event was canceled, uh, initially everybody involved refused to comment on why. What prompted you to speak out about what happened now? So I was never hiding anything and I don't think that anyone is trying to hide anything. Um, I'm not sure what you experienced, um, but yeah, this is all the information that I was given. So.